Texas took 50,000 prairie dogs, dumped them on dead land, and accidentally created an ecological miracle. No, seriously, the same critters most ranchers shoot on sight just pulled off one of the greatest environmental comebacks in modern history. And the whole thing started because someone asked a question nobody else thought to ask. What if we've been wrong about prairie dogs this entire time? Keep watching and find out. Picture this, West Texas, 2017. The land looks like Mars had a really bad breakup. Cracked earth, tumbleweeds with nothing to tumble through. Grass so sparse you could count individual blades. This is what decades of overgrazing does to land. And what's left behind couldn't support a cactus with a trust fund. But there's a twist. About 90 miles north, another part of Texas has the opposite problem. Prairie dog populations exploding. Ranchers losing their minds. About the size of a small cat, digging thousands of burrows, supposedly destroying pastures, creating hazards for livestock. The usual story. Shoot them. Poison them. Get rid of them. Well, forever. Then enters a team of ecologists who looked at these two problems and thought, hang on. What if the solution to dead land is the thing everyone's trying to kill? Sounds crazy, right? That's like saying the cure for your headache is more cowbell. But here's where it gets interesting. These scientists knew something most ranchers didn't. Something that's been buried under decades of agricultural propaganda and frontier mythology. Prairie dogs aren't destroyers. They're architects. Before we get to what happened when Texas unleashed these 50,000 rodents, we need to talk about what prairie dogs actually do. Because if you're like most people, you probably think they're just oversized rats that dig holes. Wrong. So spectacularly wrong, it's almost impressive. Prairie dogs are a keystone species. That's ecology speak for a species that holds an entire ecosystem together. Remove them. And the whole thing collapses like a Jenga tower after your drunk uncle's turn. They're ecosystem engineers. When you see a prairie dog town, you're not seeing holes in the ground. You're seeing a sophisticated network of underground highways, ventilation systems and nursery chambers that would make a civil engineer weep with envy. Each burrow has multiple entrances. Some are mounded high to prevent flooding. Others are flat for quick escapes. The tunnels can stretch 15 feet down and extend for 100 feet horizontally. And here's the kicker. All that digging, it's not destruction. It's renovation. When prairie dogs dig, they're literally aerating the soil turning it over, mixing nutrients from deep underground with topsoil. It's free-range tilling, except it doesn't compact the earth like a tractor. Their burrows create channels for water infiltration. Rain that would normally run off suddenly has somewhere to go, down into the earth where it belongs. But wait, there's more. Prairie dogs are picky eaters. They clip vegetation close to the ground, which sounds bad until you realize what this actually does. It triggers new growth stimulates root systems, creates a mosaic of vegetation heights that supports different species. It's like they're gardening, except they don't even know it. And the poop. Oh man, the poop. Each prairie dog produces about two pounds of nutrient-rich fertilizer per year. Multiply that by 50,000. That's 100,000 pounds of natural fertilizer injected directly into soil that's been starved of nutrients for decades. Jeff Bezos wishes he could deliver packages that efficiently. Still with me? Good. Because we're about to get to the good part. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department partnered with several conservation groups and private landowners. The plan was simple on paper. Trap prairie dogs from areas where they're considered pests. Transport them to degraded grasslands. Release them. See what happens. In practice, this was a logistical nightmare that makes moving house look like a casual stroll. They started in 2017. The first wave was about 3,000 prairie dogs relocated to a 1,500 acre plot of land that looked like the surface of the moon. The landowners were skeptical. Conservationists were cautiously optimistic. Scientists were practically vibrating with excitement because this was either going to be a spectacular success or a spectacular failure. And either way, they'd get data. Year one, not much happened. The prairie dogs did what prairie dogs do dug burrows, ate grass, made more prairie dogs. The land still looked pretty rough. Some critics started sharpening their knives, ready to say I told you so. But the scientists weren't worried. Ecological restoration isn't microwavable. You can't just add water and stir. 
Year two is when things started getting weird. And by weird, I mean fascinating. The areas around prairie dog burrows started showing increased plant diversity. Not just more grass, different types of grass, forbs, wildflowers. Species that hadn't been seen on that land in 30 years suddenly reappeared like they'd been hiding in the soil's memory, just waiting for an invitation. The soil itself was changing. Tests showed increased organic matter, better water retention, improved nutrient cycling. The burrows were working like tiny watering systems, channeling moisture deep into the earth and preventing evaporation. During droughts, the vegetation around prairie dog towns stayed green longer than surrounding areas. The land was breathing again. But here's where it gets really crazy. Other species started showing up. Burrowing owls moved into abandoned prairie dog holes. These guys nest underground, and without prairie dogs, they've got nowhere to go. Black-footed ferrets, one of the most endangered mammals in North America, depend almost entirely on prairie dogs for food and shelter. They hadn't been seen in that region for decades. Suddenly, they're back. Raptors started showing up. Hawks, eagles, falcons. Prairie dog towns are like all-you-can-eat buffets for predators. And before you feel bad for the prairie dogs, remember they breed like rabbits on espresso. A healthy prairie dog population can sustain predator pressure. It's natural. It's how ecosystems work when humans aren't actively destroying them. Even the insects changed. Native pollinators like bees and butterflies showed up in droves. Attracted by the wildflowers blooming around prairie dog towns, plant diversity increased by 50% in some areas. 50%. That's not a gradual improvement. That's an ecosystem hitting the fast forward button. By year three, the transformation was undeniable, and word started spreading. Other landowners wanted in. Between 2017 and 2023, Texas relocated over 50,000 prairie dogs to various degraded sites across the state. Each location showed similar results. Dead land coming back to life. Biodiversity returning. Soil health improving. One rancher, who initially thought the whole idea was insane, reported that his cattle actually preferred grazing near prairie dog towns. The grass was more nutritious, more diverse, better for livestock health. He went from wanting to shoot prairie dogs to actively protecting them. That's a heel-face turn that would make a wrestling promoter jealous. Scientists monitoring the sites found that areas with prairie dogs sequestered more carbon than areas without them. In an era where carbon capture is the holy grail of climate mitigation, these rodents are out here doing it for free. No technology required. Just biology doing what biology does when you let it. Now this isn't a fairy tale where everything's perfect and prairie dogs solve world hunger. There are complications. Some landowners still hate them. Agricultural interests push back hard because prairie dogs complicate industrial farming. There's still this deeply ingrained cultural narrative that prairie dogs are pests, varmints, things to be eliminated. Changing that mindset is harder than changing the landscape. And prairie dogs aren't a magic bullet for all degraded land. They work best in grassland ecosystems, where they evolved, try this in a forest, probably won't work. Context matters. Ecology isn't one size fits all. But here's what this story really teaches us. For over a century, American land management has been based on a fundamental misunderstanding of how ecosystems work. We've treated nature like a factory floor. Optimize for one product. Remove anything that doesn't contribute to that product. See? Prairie dogs? Bad. Simple. Except it's not simple. Ecosystems are complex webs of relationships where every species plays a role. Remove one thread, and the whole thing starts unraveling. We learned this lesson with wolves in Yellowstone. Turns out, when you bring wolves back, rivers change course because wolves hunt elk. Elk stop overgrazing riverbanks. Vegetation returns. Riverbanks stabilize. Rivers shift. It's called a trophic cascade, and it's happening with prairie dogs too. The Texas prairie dog relocation isn't just about bringing back one species. It's about restoring entire ecological communities. It's proof that nature is incredibly resilient if you give it half a chance. That barren, lifeless land. It wasn't dead. It was waiting. Waiting for the right conditions. The right catalyst. 50,000 furry little catalysts with buck teeth and attitude problems. This project has implications far beyond Texas. 
North America has lost roughly 98% of its native grasslands. That's not a typo. 98%. Gone. Converted to agriculture. Paved over. Degraded into moonscapes. Prairie dogs once numbered in the billions. Now, about 2% of historical populations remain. But projects like this show it's not too late. Not easy, but possible. And it doesn't require billion-dollar technology or massive infrastructure projects. Sometimes it just requires letting nature do what nature does best. Build, grow, adapt, thrive. Healthy grasslands provide free services. Carbon sequestration, water filtration, soil preservation, biodiversity support. These aren't hippie talking points. They're quantifiable economic benefits. The American Society of Civil Engineers estimates that natural infrastructure provides trillions of dollars in services annually. Trillions, with a T. Compare that to the cost of prairie dog relocation. A few hundred thousand dollars. Some trucks, some traps, some dedicated people, willing to wrangle thousands of rodents who absolutely do not want to be wrangled. The return on investment is astronomical. And it's not just environmentalists celebrating. Hunters like prairie dog restoration because it brings back game species. Bird watchers love it because rare birds reappear. Ranchers who've seen the benefits realize healthier land means healthier livestock. Even economists are interested because ecosystem services are valuable. There's a broader lesson here about humility. For generations, we've approached land management with the assumption that we know better than millions of years of evolution, that we can engineer better systems than nature, that species are either useful or not valuable or not, worth protecting or not. And we've been wrong, consistently, repeatedly, expensively wrong. Prairie dogs were nearly wiped out because we decided they were bad. We poisoned them by the millions, spent enormous amounts of money and effort trying to eliminate a species that was actually holding grassland ecosystems together. It's like demolishing the foundation of your house because you don't like how it looks. What Texas did was revolutionary precisely because it was so simple. Take a species everyone hates. Put it where it belongs. Step back. Let nature do the work. No genetic engineering. No complex machinery. Just basic ecological principles applied with patience and trust. The transformation continues. As of 2024, monitoring shows sustained improvements across all relocated populations. Plant diversity remains high. Soil health continues improving. Wildlife populations keep expanding. Some areas have seen water table levels rise as improved vegetation and soil structure increase water retention. In drought-prone Texas, that's not just ecologically significant, it's economically vital. Climate change makes this work even more important. Grasslands are incredibly effective carbon sinks when healthy. They're also more resilient to drought than many other ecosystems. As temperatures rise and weather patterns become more unpredictable, having robust, Diverse grasslands isn't a luxury, it's survival. The Texas Prairie Dog Project proves that restoration at scale is achievable, that we can reverse some of the damage we've done. That species we've dismissed as worthless might actually be invaluable, and that sometimes the best technology is no technology at all. Just understanding patience and letting nature be nature. So yeah, Texas unleashed 50,000 prairie dogs onto barren land. What grew next wasn't just grass and wildflowers. It was hope, proof that we can fix what we've broken. Evidence that nature is tougher, smarter, and more resilient than we give it credit for. And a reminder that sometimes the solution to our problems has been there all along, waiting for us to stop, listen, and get out of the way. Next time you see a prairie dog, maybe don't reach for the rifle. Maybe just watch for a minute. Because that little rodent might just be saving the world one burrow at a time. Hit that subscribe button. We've got more stories about nature doing impossible things while humans figure out how to stop screwing everything up. See you next time.